A few weeks ago I did a robot AI demo video showing NVIDIA's deep learning models for vision recognition and showing TurtleBot doing autonomous mapping and navigation using ROS. And that video seemed to do quite well, the views are pretty good and people seem to enjoy it. So this video is another technology demonstration and today we're going to be looking at putting speech recognition into your projects, mostly with no coding or very little coding. This video is supported by Cool Components, more about them later, and if you want to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. I'm going to be looking at the Grove speech recognition board for Arduino, the Speak Up Click board from Micro, and I'm also going to be looking at my Robot Lab, which is an interesting open source software project which can do lots of things, including speech recognition. But first of all, an obligatory mention for your favourite Amazon Home Assistant and using an ESP8266 to fake a Belkin light switch. James Bruton! Turn the wake up machine on! Sorry, ah. I didn't find wake up machine. <laughs> it's that? here! <laughs> it's here! You moved it a minute ago. Is that, is the USB definitely in? Yeah, it should be. Is it definitely on? Yeah, the, the lights are on working. inside. Turn on the wake up machine. Sorry, I didn't find wake up machine. Beautiful bit of footage this. Turn the bed shaker on. He did it! It worked! And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll remember when I made that video with Colin Furs. He made a bed shaker to get his kid out of bed in the morning and he wanted to activate it with his Amazon Home Assistant that he got for Christmas that year. So we used an ESP8266 program with some code I found on the internet that makes it pretend to be a Belkin Waymo light switch. Now it's best if you use one command or at least one thing to name it instead of bed shaker or something like that because the Amazon Home Assistant will understand it better but we got there in the end and that allows you to turn a digital pin on and off and that activated a relay that activated the motor. So that's an okay solution for adding voice recognition to your projects but you will need to have your Home Assistant on the Wi-Fi, the ESP on your Wi-Fi and everything connected and working so it's good for home automation but not much good for things that need to be completely independent. So next we're going to look at the Grow Speech Recognizer module and this has been provided by Cool Components who are supporting this video, so just a quick ad for them. Cool Components stock Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Microbit and many many other electronics and project parts. They're also a reseller for Adafruit, SparkFun Electronics and Teensy. So you can get all those microcontrollers and associated modules to your projects such as shields, hats, soundboards and displays. Cool Components also stock a range of robot arms and accessories and lots of other components like switches, LEDs, cameras and connectors. You may remember that I filmed the final testing of my Sonic the Hedgehog balancing robot in Cool Components warehouse and I'll hopefully be doing some more projects with Cool Components when lockdown is over. Cool Components have provided the Grove kit which actually does a couple of other things so let's unbox it and have a look. The main component of this kit is the Grove base shield which is the standard form factor to fit on an Arduino, Mega, Uno or any of those with the same connectors. There's also a bunch of cables with connectors on each end to plug into this shield and connect all the other provided modules. And the ones provided in this kit are infrared transmitter and receiver, a real-time clock with a battery backup, an MP3 player which has an SD slot in the back and of course the speech recognizer module. If we look at the Seed Studio website we've got a page for both the actual speech recognizer kit which is very long and talks about all of the modules and we won't look all the way through that for now but what we'll look at is just the speech recognizer module which has got a lot of documentation and further down it gives you the specification tells you what the parts of the module are and also tells you the 22 commands it recognizes now this will only recognize those 22 commands it won't do anything else unfortunately so you do need the base shield although we'll talk about that in a moment and it tells you how to connect it there's some simple Arduino code which is pretty simple, it's only that long and the only bit that actually does something is this tiny piece down here. In fact all the commands here aren't really needed because all it's doing is reading your command over serial and then basically printing it out. 
referencing it to the commands there, which are the words it recognizes. So you could just read this variable and that will give you the index for all of those commands. And you could use that with an if statement to control something else. I've mounted my shield onto an Arduino Uno and I've plugged the module into the digital two pin which you can see just there as recommended in the guide. And this just appears to be connecting the pins to digital two, digital three, VCC and ground. You can just see the labels to the right of each connector. So I'd be very surprised if you couldn't just connect this module straight to the pins without the shield or to a smaller Arduino like a Pro Mini or a Nano. So you don't need to have a whole Uno, which means you could get the whole thing in a much smaller space. And I've also connected my USB cable that's connected to the computer at the moment so we can program it with the Arduino IDE. I've put that code into my Arduino IDE, just setting up software serial on pins two and three, all of the default stuff. We've got an array with all those commands in and the only modification I've made is right down at the bottom here, where I'm actually printing out that command so we can see the index number as well as referring to the array to see what we've said. For some reason, the default is command minus one because presumably the index starts at two, which is a bit mysterious. Perhaps there's a secret hidden command, which is actually one, and we don't know what it is. But let's see how that works anyway. So I spent a while shouting at an Arduino before I realized there's a wake up word you have to say before it will recognize the phrases you say. It is in the instructions, and the wake up word is hi cell, hi cell, turn on the TV. So we should be able to see those results in the serial terminal. And of course we can use an if statement to use that index number to make it do something else. High cell, high cell, increase temperature. So it's pretty reliable. It works a bit better if you speak very clearly and directly into the microphone. And also if you use a slight American accent. High cell, turn on the TV but most of the time it works pretty reliably. So of course you could build this into a smaller Arduino and just have this module and an Arduino Nano and use it to control something like an Iron Man helmet with speech recognition because it recognizes commands like up and down to open the faceplate and of course lights on and lights off. So that's a pretty compact solution, but you can't change the words and you can't change the accents. There's no setting for British English, for instance. Everything is hard coded into the chip on board. But there are other modules, of course, that ship with it, like the MP3 player, for instance, and that's just as easy to use. So you can make a voice activated MP3 player or another home automation device. There's also a graphical programming language, which is a bit like Scratch, which means you don't have to write any code at all to use the whole thing. Next up is the Speak Up Clickboard from Micro. This is another self-contained solution, but this time you can program up to 200 words or phrases that you can record yourself and decide what actions they take. I've connected my Speak Up Clickboard with USB to my laptop, and there's a piece of software you can download, which comes with the board, and that is the configuration utility. So basically you can record up to 200 phrases and you can activate up to 12 digital pins with no coding. And we'll talk about how to use the full 200 in a moment. So for now, you can go and basically record a sound by recording into the microphone from the Speak Up Click. And I've already recorded three sounds, which sound like this. Number one. Number one. Number two. And as you'd imagine, number three and you can go and edit those and record them as many times as you want until you're happy with the way they sound and then for each one you can assign some actions to the pin so i've assigned these pins here to be toggling pin one for number one toggling pin two for number two and toggling pin three for number three i can also send them high or low or pulse them for a specific amount of time there's some other configuration stuff, so you can set the initial state of the pin to high or low. You can set various other things here to do with serial communication, we'll look at in a moment. And you can also set the acceptance threshold. I've upped that from 15, which is the default to 40, because I found it didn't really recognize what I said, and you can play with that yourself. All you need to do then is click on upload, and that will upload the program into the Speak Up clickboard, and it'll stay there until you reprogram it. So one annoying feature about this board is that you can't actually push it into breadboard because of the connectors, the USB and the external mic connector, because the pins won't push down. So I've had to use these long wires to go and attach that to the board here. So I've got this plugged into a USB boost bank right now, so it's not connected to the computer anymore and everything's running completely independently. But now I should be able to turn off the LEDs and turn them on again with the voice commands. Number one. Number two. Number three, 
number two, number one, number three, and that seems to work pretty repeatably. That seems to work pretty well and it's pretty repeatable depending on how high you set the threshold. And of course you can record any words or phrases in any accents and it will still work. So there's 12 digital pins you can access that way with absolutely no coding at all. But if you want to use the full capacity of 200 words, then you'll need to link it to a microcontroller with the serial pins. So I've just got a TNC 3.6 here and the reason I've chosen that is because it's a 3.3 volt board and everything matches, all the levels match because this is also a 3.3 volt board. So I've got 3.3 volt regulator on the TNC powering the speech board, my common ground, and I've got a serial line linked from the TX on the speech board to RX on interface serial one on the TNC. So now we can write some Arduino code to read the data from this board and we can access all 200 speech slots. So the code is pretty simple. We've got just two variables for two bytes. We're going to read over serial and I've opened two serial ports. One is the serial debug so we can see the results. And the other one is serial one which is the hardware port we're linked to on the TNC. And then we're just looking for serial data and reading those two bytes one after the other and printing them out to the serial terminal. So now if we say some words, we should see some data in the serial terminal. Number one, Number two, number three, number two, number three, number one. That's not too bad and of course we can fill all the slots up to 200 and you can imagine what happens. I haven't actually tried it, I've only tried with three and of course we can put any words or phrases into each of those slots. So it's pretty good with single word or phrase commands but what if we want to use a whole string of text and get that text into our code to go and process an entire string and perhaps do something more conversational. Well next we're going to look at My Robot Lab which is a ready-made solution in software but also allows you to put your own Python code into it so you can do custom stuff. This is the My Robot Lab website, and My Robot Lab does do multiple things. So there's a lot of blog posts here for people doing various things with various robots using My Robot Lab, and it's very popular with the InMove robot for people who 3D print those. My Robot Lab itself is a Java app that looks like this, and we've got various things we can just spin up by going to runtime. And since this video is about speech recognition, let's go down to speech recognition. There's several different speech recognition engines. You can run this on Android because it's a Java app. So we've got one for Android, we've got Sphinx, which is local. And today we're going to look at WebKit speech recognition, which uses the Google WebKit API from Chrome. So you will need a full install of Chrome installed on your machine to make it work. This is a Windows machine, so that's no problem. Let's start that and give it a name. And we should find it opens a tab called speech and let's start the web GUI. So that should launch a Chrome browser tab. And what's actually happening is a web server is started up in my robot lab that this page is talking to. So you can actually see it's already transcribing my speech here and that works pretty well. And it should be returning that to my robot lab. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Mary Poppins. So as you can see, the results are pretty good there. And that will give us a string of text and we can write some Python code within my robot lab and then we can actually process that text and do what we want with it. So I stole some Python code from the My Robot Lab forums which automatically launches that tab and the browser and sets the thing off listening. And then I've got some conditions here where I'm actually looking at the data and if I say the word lights, it should tell me what I've said and also print a statement here. Lights. Lights. But of course that's conditional on the word being lights. If I say anything else, then it doesn't do anything. But of course we can set up more and more. To get the Google WebKit API version to work, you will actually need to put it on an operating system that has full Chrome installed. It no longer works with Chromium, which is the open source version of Chrome. So you used to be able to run it on a Raspberry Pi or a Jetson Nano or another ARM-based platform with a Chromium browser, but now Google have dropped support for the speech API, unfortunately. There are other speech recognition engines you can use, like Pocket Sphinx, but those are run locally instead of looking up to the internet, which is what the Google WebKit API does. 
so they're not quite as good at recognizing speech. My Robot Lab does do a lot of other things though. I've demonstrated this previously. It's got OpenCV built into it that you can program just as easily to track a face. And you can also use the Leap Motion, which will track hand gestures. You can directly access the GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi, and you can also put some special code on an Arduino linked to it with USB, and you can access all the I.O. on there as well, and control servos and motors. So there's quite a lot of stuff you can do there, and in fact, you can use my robot lab to program your entire robot. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more generic videos like this about using product in your project, let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll see if I can get that together. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. Thanks again to Cool Components for supporting this video. That's all for now.